Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast. Holy shit, it's been about two months. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was my fault. Sorry. Yeah, because you moved. Yeah, um... My first, my house got super crowded, and then I moved, and things have been crazy, but they're settling down now. Yay! Things have been crazy on the show too for the past couple of months. Holy shit, you've been missing out. I know. I I haven't been I haven't been able to watch the show. Like I think the last the last thing I saw was um boy like oh. Nathan and Maxie getting handcuffed together. And oh wow, that is a while. Yeah, Britt was scheming with um, Spencer to try and get Nicholas back, and so yeah, I I know I've missed a lot. Uh, yeah, every every once in a while, I see something um, on you know go by my feed from the General Hospital page, and I'm like, how did that happen? Oh my god, I'm so far behind. <laughs> Oh yeah, so so this is this is Namio's catch up week, basically. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, and and, and catch up week for everybody else who hasn't been keeping track of the show, or if this is your first time, you're getting a whole bunch of info dump. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because the Cassidines are rearing their heads once more, and I don't mean Nicholas, I mean like Victor and 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 Stavros. Mm. Fucking Stavros. Stavros. So they did they they brought him back already. Yes, they have brought back Stavros. After it was confirmed that, yes, they, the thing that Victor had taken Robin away for, Robin went off to say Jason, it worked. Jason yeah. is alive. And he, is be- and he has been recast. So it's not going to be Steve Burton as Jason anymore, which I'm going to have to get used to because when I first started, it was, it was Steve Burton, you know? Of course, now people hear Steve Burton, they don't think General Hospital. They think, oh, he played Cloud, didn't he? Yeah, that's Cloud. <laughs> Cloud was on a soap opera. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of actors start out on soap operas, and uh, like that used to confuse me until I started watching one. I'm like, you know, soap operas are actually like really great acting experience because it's kind of low pressure and you get to be intense and you get to like try out characters. And... Oh yeah, yeah. And some of the some of the even. Even more established actors will sometimes go into soaps. Like, a big example would be John Calicos, who played Nikos back in the 80s. In fact, I got a clip of, like, one of his Hemi villain speeches from that time period, put it up on Tumblr, and I made Louis uh, Linkara squee. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was like, yeah, I know this guy. Yeah, that, that, it's like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but for those who don't know, John Calicos, he played uh, one of the original Klingons on Star Trek. But if you watch the original Battlestar Galactica, he played uh, Balthazar. So if you know him from either of those, yeah, you've seen him, you know how he acts. He's no less hammy. And that hammy does pass on through the family, including Victor and Stavros. Oh my god, Stavros. <laughs> oh god. It's, it's well, I, is, is, is it the same guy who was um, in the flashbacks when I first started watching who like forced Lulu to marry him? Yep. Same guy. Yeah, like you just in those uh, in those flashbacks, I was like, "Wow, this guy like <laughs> he's hilarious." <laughs> oh yeah, he is deliciously hammy and scenery chewing. Oh my god, I, I want to hear back from Emma Ryland and, and to to just I want her to tell me how much bacon she smelled on his breath when he was in her face. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> Because he's Woo-hoo. deliciously hammy. He's yes, deliciously yes. hammy. And, and even with all the hamminess, it doesn't really take away from the actual threat that Stavros and his family actually have. Yeah, yeah. they're big, scenery-chewing hams, but they mean serious fucking business. I still don't know exactly what what Victor is up to in terms of his overall endgame, but since then, uh, Levi has been outed as not Levi – who is not even Australian. He's a fake Aussie. Oh, really? Yes. What a shocker. I know, right? Uh, and it got to the point where it's like he almost married Maxie, 
And then Nathan came and running and like, yeah, you know what? You know, kind of figuring a lot of this stuff out and trying to stop um, Levi because Levi is after the Aztec jewelry that Felicia had. And what turned uh, Nathan onto his trail was the fact that uh, the, the camera – the reporter at the nurse's ball that Felicia gave some of her Aztec jewelry to, that guy had his jewelry stolen after Felicia just told Levi in conversation about what had happened. And then Levi's like, hey, uh, I, I'm going to be alone. You know, I'm going to be a while. I'm going, I'm going to need some time. And in that time, he went and stole the treasure. So, like, who is he really, and why does he want the Aztec jewelry? Well, well, Levi is actually Peter Harrell Jr. Peter, Peter Harrell Sr. being a man who was engaged to Felicia when she first came on the show back in the 80s. Okay. Which also involved her Aztec treasure and Aztec heritage. So, I don't, I don't know. It turns out now that Harold Sr., he's paralyzed at uh, Crichton Clark, and and Levi, you know, Junior brought him there. And last time I saw them, they were he was wanting to kill Maxie. I guess, I guess it's revenge because at one point uh, Harold Sr. was shot in the head, and he survived, which which can happen. Okay, so so Levi's plan. Was to find Maxie when she was on walkabout, uh, seduce her, start, move back to the States with her, start living with her, marry her, all to get to her mother's jewelry. Pretty much. He is also... That seems really stupid. He's also one of Victor's operatives. Ooh. Yes. Victor has got... Which... Bear in mind, Victor is the head of the WSB. How mm. much do you want to bet that it, it was it, it was uh, through Victor's designs that Julian and Fake Luke are trouble in Port Charles right now? Mm. We still don't know who Fake Luke is, but more people realize, okay, like like Ava knows that Luke is not Luke. She realizes this. Do you, I think Julian confirmed it for her, and she's been trying to scheme with Fake Luke. And right now she's in a bit of a bind because she promised him either the goods on Sonny, you know, killing AJ, or uh, to, to put it as gruesome as possible, uh, Michael's head on a platter. Why Michael? Because Michael has control of, of uh, ELQ. He's the CEO. And when Tracy and Fake Luke tried to, you know, get it back, Michael found oh, okay. out and he, he said, you know, he fired Tracy. Okay, so, yeah. No, okay, I do. I do remember that. Um, did we ever find out who caused uh, Patrick and Sabrina's accident? Yes, it was Rafe. Oh yeah, no, but I mean, like he said, I heard someone put it up, put him up to it, yes. or something like that. It was Victor. Okay. And he did it by dangling the pro- dangling the promise that he could bring his mother back from the dead in Rafe's face. What? Yeah. I don't know if he actually has uh, um, Allison, you know, Rafe's mom, in stasis somewhere at Crichton Clark, but that's the promise he made to Rafe, and Rafe is like, I get to see my mother. Okay, I've got to do this. And obviously very conflicted, but obviously his want to have his mother back was stronger than anything else. And obviously Rafe had no idea that little Gabriel was going to die. Yeah. So, you know, he had no, no ideas going in there. And, and Rafe died, didn't he? Yes, he died. Uh, okay. he, he died, and Patrick was the one operating on him. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, okay, sorry. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm trying to, like, bring things together that I, like, yes. <laughs> saw pieces of. <laughs> That's fine. This is, this is the catch-up show. This is definitely <laughs> the catch-up show. <laughs> Okay, so so yeah, does so does Patrick feel responsible for Rafe's death? Um, when it, when it initially happened, Patrick, you know, he was he was hard on himself, of course, you know, but he but he also knew but he also knew himself, you know, he knew in his heart that he did not mean for Rafe to die. To Silas, a little convincing, but you know, I don't know if Silas is. I think Silas might be coming around from the looks of it. Okay. So it hasn't really been demonstrated much, and what and the bad thing is, uh, I think it was uh, 
yeah, Silas and Sam were talking about it on the roof at one point. And, you know, Sam, you know, being honest with Silas, told him everything. You know, yeah, Patrick did have, you know, have the desire to want to kill Rafe right there on the table, but he didn't. And that got out and got to the press, and somebody had asked Patrick at a press conference. And Patrick pretty much admitted it, leading him to get fired. Because, oh. Yeah, because Obrecht, if, if nothing else, she, she, you know, she, I think she trusted Patrick, but it was like a PR nightmare type thing. Yeah. So it was like, I, that's understandable. Patrick is currently appealing to the, the decision, of course, but, but for right now, for all intents and purposes, he is jobless and he's running around playing detective with Sam. So, so, you know, and, and they've been looking up info on, say, Nina who is not really wheelchair-bound, who is up and walking around, at least in private. Franco knows her secret. <laughs> oh, how'd he figure her out? Or... Oh, they were stuck in an elevator, and he was freaking out, and she she was like, fuck this, got up and you know, like literally stood up and calmed him down. And after a moment of shock, she was like, oh, oh, but Franco wasn't buying it. Again, Franco is insane, not stupid. <laughs> He, he catches on pretty quick well, with a lot of things. He's not, he's not supposed to be insane anymore, or, or did he, has he backslid? He hasn't back. Well, insane in, in the gen- – not, not in the – oh, my no, – not in the knife you in the heart, knife you in the heart, knife you in the back, knife you in the face insane. Just, just like general <laughs> insane. You know, the good kind of insane. <laughs> he, he's, he's weird and insane, but he's not stupid. He's a good kind of murderer. Like yeah, Dexter. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he hasn't been murdering people, but uh, – but he still holds, uh, you know, the the whole idea that, um, you know, he still holds the information that Sonny was the one who killed AJ, thanks to him and Carly going to find out from Spinelli, uh, with a, who the, I think they live over in Oregon now or whatever. So we got to see Spinelli. We got to see Ellie. Ah, Ellie. <laughs> oh, into baby, little baby hey, Georgie. Little baby. Yep. Yay. Oh, so that was that was that was a good thing. Um, and Carly, god damn it, Carly, and god damn it, Sonny. The two of them, Carly cheated on Franco with Sonny. God damn it, why? Because, why? because what? reasons, I don't know. It's like, Carly and Sonny know they're terrible together. But apparently the sex must be good. And it's like, uh, you know, I don't care if the sex is good. There's a reason why I don't talk to a certain ex-girlfriend of mine. I don't care how good the sex was. We are not good for each other. Ugh. It's just, no. And Sonny has got this smug, like, oh, he'll come back, he'll come back. Oh, I'll deal with Franco, you know. You, do, you know, he, you know he, he shouldn't be around, you know. Acting like he is lord and master, he's supposed to trying to be lord and master over not only Carly's life, but Franco's life. And that's the kind of thing I just want to punch him in the face for. It's, yeah, it's Franco's like, not going to respond well to that either. No, and he doesn't. <laughs> you know, he'll fire back. Not all, not necessarily with his fist, but, you know, god damn, he, he, he's good with his words. <laughs> Ah, uh, I think that's the one good thing about Franco. It's like that, you know, like current Franco. He's not very violent. He does have a jealous streak, which, you know, Carly understands. He understands, and he tries. And and, and Franco's trying, you know. He's, he's trying to grab hold of that. And um, but although Franco does know that Sonny basi- basically forced himself on her and a ki- forced a kiss on Carly. Okay. So it's like, and Franco at first was like, what? <laughs> You know, and of course he gets murder. You know, well I say murderously, but but, but murderously jealous, and he confronts Carly to find out, and he finds out the real deal, and of course he tells Sonny back the fuck off, even though uh, there was one point he he he'd gotten home after the elevator incident, and that was also the same night that uh, Carly banged Sonny. But but Sonny. You know, despite telling Carly, I'm not going to hide from him. Let him come see me. I'll kill him. I'll kick his ass. You know, that sort of thing. Sonny hid anyway. Because of Carly, probably. It's like, <sighs> God damn it, Sonny. You, 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 are, you are a bastard. Yeah. It's like, dude, you know. It can be endearing sometimes, but other times I'm just like, 
Smack that guy in the face, please. Yes, please, please, you, Sonny, you're 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 up here, and and to those who can't obviously you can't see it on the here, but my uh, my arm is outstretched over my head, like completely fully. You know, he's up here, but I need him to go down here, which right now is about um, about my hip. So you need to go. You need to be knocked down several pegs. All right. Uh, and, and I really hope Julian will do that, or somebody. Somebody, not, yeah. Not kill him, but knock him down. Uh, and speaking of Julian, uh, Jordan, uh, I don't remember if you had seen that Jordan has been revealed to be DEA. Yes, I did see that. Yes, and she was working the angle with Mickey Diamond, who was one of Fake Luke's enforcers. Okay. And you know things were getting hot and heavy. He had he had discovered. That she was an agent, quite by accident, either by accident or just, you know, because he's just that genre savvy. Around the same time, um, Julian tried to leave the mob, and Fake Luke responded by torching Alexis's house. Oh, I, I did not see that. Yeah. Yeah, thankfully I, I nobody was, was hurt. Gonna, but, yeah. Yeah, and of course that scared Julian back into the mob, but not before busting in to Mickey Diamond's hotel room just as he was about to off uh, Jordan. And... Yeah, because, okay, sorry, Becky, what, what I saw was uh, that Luke got, Luke, excuse me, got uh, Julian back in by shooting Lucas. That oh, was one way he did it. And so he also torched Alexis's house? Yes, to send a message. Wow. So, yeah. I, I think the details... In between them might be a little off on my end, but okay. both of them are from the same end of the mob. Okay. And yeah. Oh God, just just and and of course jo Julian couldn't keep a secret from Alexis any longer that he's still back in the mob because you know because of fake Luke and you know they broke up, but not after one last round of hot sex. <laughs> because well, okay, she she broke up with him. After the sex. Because he stayed in the mob to protect her. Yeah. God, you know what? I, uh, I get really sick of Alexis's fucking hypocrisy. It really pisses me off. It, and even, like, it, even though she's, like, admitted multiple times that she's a hypocrite, it doesn't stop her from being a hypocrite. No, it doesn't. Uh, it just does not. Ugh. Uh, so, yeah. And like I said earlier, meanwhile, Ava is, you know, she's trying to work the angle with fake Luke, and she almost kills Michael. She almost succeeds, you know, poisoning his dessert. She almost succeeds in killing him, except for the fact that Kiki mentioned that fake Luke was hitting on her and tried to rape her. Oh. Ava Jerome going mama bear. Oh my god. Yes. I, I am behind Ava on this one. Just, yeah. She's, she's, so, like, she's like, fuck that guy. So, the, yeah, but that's been, that's been going on for quite a while. Did Ava only just find out about it? Yes. Okay. So, uh, what, what's going on with Ava's pregnancy? She's still pregnant. Okay. Um, Sabrina's back, and Sabrina knows that Ava is pregnant, and... Sabrina believes that it was Ava because uh, because uh, Sabrina went to go see Carlos, and Carlos believes it was Ava who ordered the hit on Patrick. And of course, you know, like a computer, false information in, false information out. Yeah. So of course that got passed on to Sabrina. Sabrina now has has, has a death uh, a, a just a death hatred of Ava now because yeah, her baby was killed, but Ava's gonna have a new one. Maybe he's gonna have a baby. Yeah. Which somebody's gonna somebody's gonna make off of that baby, I think. And it'll probably be Nina, and as others are saying, it'll be it'll probably be Nina who does it and ends up framing Sabrina. You know, I'm pretty sure every baby has to get kidnapped on this show. At least once. I'm really like I'm really surprised Georgie hasn't been kidnapped yet. But I'm sure she'll come back at some point and get kidnapped. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh well. Uh, I'm, I'm just just imagine everybody at the floating rib, like like uh, at least Maxie's generation onward. So when were you kidnapped? I was two months old. What about you? I was four. How about you? 
Uh, I was kidnapped when I was a newborn. Almost yeah. dropped off a hospital roof, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that happened on Port Charles. <laughs> or at least something similar. Or was that a movie I was seeing? I don't oh, know. Well. Oh, well. But, oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. So, so okay, I had mentioned that, you know, the, the whole Levi up to Peter Harrell thing. How that ended up happening was at the wedding, it was on the Haunted Star. So Lulu and Dante were there. Um, the cover was blown. And not only did Levi, but also the D, you know, the uh, DEA, not DEA, but the, uh, yeah, the, the, the um, 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 immigration yeah. agent, yeah. you know, the immigration agent was also one of uh, Levi's flunkies and, and resident nearly red shirt, nearly red shirt because in the process of moving Maxie and Lulu around to eventually to Crichton Clark, or, or at least a safe house, and then to Crichton Clark. Once, once uh, Victor got a hold of them, you know, Levi just shot the other guy. Just shot him. Oh, that's nice. Like you've outlived your usefulness. Shot. Hmm. So, but but the other guy survived and let him know what who Levi really is and all of that good stuff. And that's about all the info- information they got out of it. And. And so at, at the safe house, at the other safe house, the second safe house rather, is uh, when when uh, they're able to get a call to the police and the police were able to track it. And they get there with Dante and Nathan, you know, heading up the team or whatever. They manage to take out Levi and it looks like, OK, everybody's going to be rescued or what have you. And then a smoke bomb comes in, smoke and a sleeping can- gas can or whatever comes in, knocks everybody out. And... Oh God, <laughs> Nathan! Nathan is outside at this point, so he okay. he did not get hit with the gas. But in walks all these guys with the gas masks and the yellow suits and everything, and the one guy in a suit also in a gas mask. Turns out to be Victor. What a who, shock! Yeah, who who says okay, we're going to take these people, you know, back to the base or whatever, and and he realizes. That Nathan is not in there, so he calls for him to come out. Nathan pops in, holding a gun on him, naturally. Naturally. And and about this time, he's starting to figure out. Okay, he is Obrecht's son, but not with Faison. Okay. So Victor is suspect. Victor started to suspect that yes, this police officer right here, this detective, it might be my son. Which is pretty much confirmed at this point. Oh. Uh, Confirmed by Obrecht, of all people, who at one point was was calling Victor because, hey, you know, Nathan's her son. He's missing. He, she is worried. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's like, OK, where is he? And Victor's like, I've got him here. <laughs> and and if you don't want anything to happen, you know, blah, 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 blah. He's basically threatening Nathan, you know, at her. And she's like, fuck this. And she went to Anna and said, you know what? I know where the fuck he is. I'll, I'll, let me tell you. Crichton fucking Clark. <laughs> you know, and this is just as Anna is about to tell Britt and Nicholas what happened to Faison. Uh, but yeah. Mm, so where, where else? Oh, yeah. Stavros. I've got to I've got to finish up on Stavros because he somehow got an egg from Lulu before he put her in the deep freeze and had it implanted with his seed. So, what? So he is carrying around a Lulu Stavros uh, um, embryo. What? Yeah. Needless- okay, okay. You know, okay, I just, I just want to say this really quick. You know, I saw someone comment when it came out, you know, that uh, uh, Scott was uh, Franco's father. He, they were saying that this is like the third grown child that Scott Baldwin has just discovered. Yeah. How many children do you think in the course of this show are just going to magically be from Lulu's eggs? Oh, I don't know. I hope there's not too many. <laughs> <laughs> because now that they've teased that Stavros stole some of her eggs, there's no telling how many he took. Yeah, I know. I mean, and, and of course, there is the whole violation of Lulu's body in the process. And and, that, and naturally, everybody's disgusted. Dante wants to kill him. I don't blame him. 
And they try everything. They try every trick in the book to get him to not implant her with an embryo, including using the truth like, yeah, you know what? I can't do it. But then Starvos is like, no, we know you, uh, you we know you got the actual you know, thing done. You got the surgery, so you can like – you can, like, carry your shit, you know? And she's like, yeah, I got the surgery, but I need hormones. And he's like, okay, we got that. Brings in a doctor with a with a goddamn syringe full of those hormones. And injects her. So, wait, where is Lulu? Crichton Clark. Okay, that's, I'm assuming that's the place in New York where Robin was? Yes. Okay. And once, once Jason woke up, uh, Victor had Robin taken away. Don't know where she is now. For all we know, she could be held prisoner there, too. Oh, Jeebus. Everything is going to be going down there, because last I, last I saw, Maxie got herself free, and that's when she got – when she found uh, you know Peter Harrell Sr. And, and then Nathan ended up getting free when one of the guards came back in, and Nathan played dead until the guard you know kind of lowered his own guard, and Nathan overpowered him, got his key, and got out. I loved the music because it was, it was like very metal geary in ter- in mm-hmm. terms of tone. It was like it was just yes. So Nathan makes it to Victor's office, holds a gun to him, asks him where the hell Maxie is, and Victor's like, "You wouldn't shoot your own father, would you?" Yeah, <laughs> I'm just at that point. I'm pretty sure Nathan's like, "Fuck you, yes, I would." <laughs> yeah, I-, I would hope so. At the very least, shoot him in the leg. Yeah, <laughs> you know, don't kill him. That's true, you don't have to kill him. (laughs) Yeah, especially in front of your mother. (laughs) Because Obrecht had made it in there, because what ended up happening there was um, when Anna discovered where where Crichton Clark was, she's like, Obrecht, you're coming with me, and we are going to send you in to get the information on where all these hostages are. Obrecht gets in there, and Anna, for for her part, she keeps egging Obrecht on, like reminding her of what she needs to do, and and just – Pretty much annoying the fuck out of Obrecht, who who mentally goes the fuck is he sin? Just kind of pulls it, pulls the uh, earpiece out of her ear that she had yeah. been concealing, and Anna's like fuck, and, and Anna goes in herself by herself. God damn, is Anna is so bad at her job? I just <laughs> like ugh. anyway, continue. Yeah. Although at least at least she is going in kind of she is kind of going in more stealthily and then not just storing the not storming it with guns a blazing or anything. So to, you know, because hey, there are four hostages in there. She wants to make sure they're safe. So she's not going in guns blazing. That's why she didn't call for backup. Even though Obrecht is like, well, if I don't, you just call for backup. And I was like, well, that's not my jurisdiction, and, and they're not going to go in there on on a hunch. It's like, well, you are. <laughs> But that's stupid. You sent an operative in there. If you hadn't heard from that operative, yes, you can call the fucking cops. Yeah. God, that's stupid. Yeah. The only oh, everyone is stupid. <laughs> the only reason I could see, the only reason I could see for her not calling them right away, would be time. And time could have been on the essence. That would be the only reason. But some, based on some of the previews I'm seeing. Anna's oh god it, it could be, this is this is the kind of thing that could be turned into a video game <laughs> just yeah. infiltrate and, and get all this information um, and and I'd mentioned that Patrick and um, 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 Sam I think I'd mentioned that they went to Craig Clark to look up some information on Nina specifically whether or not Nina actually needs that wheelchair and whether she actually needs the leg exercises. In order to get back on her feet, which we all know she doesn't, but they don't know yeah. that yet. And while they were there, Patrick went looking around, you know, using his credentials, can say, you know, legitimate doctor here, to look around, and he ended up finding Robin. Oh. Patrick's kind of pissed. Yeah. Because you were here this whole goddamn time, you couldn't come home, blah, blah, yada, 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 yada. And I am seeing from both sides on this. You know, because Robin is doing this to save a friend, and, 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 and of course, who knows what Victor would do if she had refused to begin with. Because, as Victor had once has said, never trust a Cassidyne. So, so with that in mind, who's to say that when Victor made his initial offer, 
that he would not have done something to Patrick or Emma anyway. Yeah. So there is that to contend with. Of course, Patrick probably doesn't see it that way, and yeah, I kind of don't blame him at this point, considering that you know he lost his son, his wife, now ex-wife. They're going through a divorce. Yeah. Was not there. And and honestly, I'm not liking the whole way they took Robin on this one. Yeah, you know, I. It's like they're using one of the best parts about her character, and and making her into the bad guy in this. I just like I I I just have to take everybody's word for it that Robin used to be a really uh, good character that you know that you were rooting for because like since I've been watching I'm just like you know what Robin doesn't deserve Patrick yeah. she is so selfish and yeah. I'm just yeah no I I am. Uh, I, I'm I'm still rooting for Sabrina and Patrick. Yeah. I know it's probably you know if they do go that route, it's probably going to be ways down the road. That's fine. Realistically, in real life, you know, it would be really hard to bounce back from you know the death of a child if you ever bounce back at all. Yeah. But you know what? That's fine. But yeah, yeah. yeah Robin Robin doesn't deserve to come home after after all the shit she's pulled. No, no, not not for a while, which you know that that may be Kim McCulloch's plan. You know, good idea of a good thing. Yeah, you know what, you know what, let's leave the character off for a while. That's fine. I'll, I'll be over here doing my thing, making making little independent movies, which she does well. She does a good enough job at it, so you know, mm-hmm. some more power to her. Oh, and that actually leads leads back into uh, well, okay, Patrick and Sam, they are. The writers are seeming to take this to to the two of them actually starting maybe to get a little bit more than just friends with each other. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Jason is slated to be coming back. Boy, that's going to be complicated. Dun, 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 dun. Is goddamn. What, what's going on with Silas and Sam? Silas and Sam broke up after. No. Yeah, I know. It was like after no. everything went down. And it is essentially Nina. I think it to to put the put a very very uh short story on it. It's Nina, yeah. and of course Nina has this list of everybody she wants to hurt, including Kiki who did nothing to her, and Ava naturally, and yeah. the two of them finally met face to face. Holy shit! <laughs> I think Nina left Ava like visibly shaken. It's like Ava's like holy shit. <laughs> it's like you you have a mob mistress who does not want to fuck with you. That's yeah. pretty amazing. <laughs> oh lordy, I, mean, I, I can see, I can see um, uh, Nina and Franco eventually getting together. Eventually, because Franco works at the hospital, he does the art therapy, and Nina's been cutting her uh, physical therapy, which she really doesn't need, to go to art therapy with Franco. And the two of them have chatted; they've become good friends, and. And it's just you know the the two of them are going to end up together. Just just watch. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know either. But did, did Franco and Carly break up? They have not yet. Okay. And I say yet because you know it's going to happen because you know the writers. So one of the writers over there has just this boner for having Sonny and Carly together. Yeah, the two actors they have great chemistry together. Great, fine. But as a choice for the characters, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't know. I get, I get tired of the of the idea that no one can be happy. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know that was that was kind of a thing in um, in the Buffy and Angel series, and you see it you see it a lot in in Joss Whedon's work, mm-hmm. where you know you can have couples that are happy for a while, but nobody can be happy forever. Yeah, I mean, and of course. You you gotta have some peop you gotta have some conflict somewhere. Otherwise, you know, this is gonna be a rather boring show. I mean, the kind of conflict that I like to see done is uh well like this with Dante and Lulu. They're a happy couple, they've got their baby, but now they've been kidnapped by well, basically an overly hammy, super entitled, royal jackass mama's boy. Yeah. That would be Stavros for those who are playing along. They have not thought out Helena yet. She she is still in the 
she is still in stasis, but they 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 have Helena there. That just just a little bit that I saw of Helena um, in the flashbacks, mm-hmm. uh, like. I'm excited for her coming back because, <laughs> god damn, she was creepy as fuck. She is creepy as fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like, it's it's like with Stavros, you could fit in an, you could fit an Oedipus complex in there with him because yeah. the only person that he probably loves more than even his own son or, or Lulu in th- at this point would be his mother. It's just, wow, the Oedipus is strong in this one. And you know what? It's almost the same. If you go back and watch, um, they call it, they call the, this particular plotline the in-game plotline when Stavros was originally brought back, like in, in, I think, 2001. And to see the two of them interact, it's like, you know that, that, that they, they, they poke fun at the whole incestuous thing in the Cassidyne family. And that's where you can see it most. I mean, they don't do anything, obviously, but it's like, holy shit. Uh... And of course, with Nathan being a Cassidyne and Nicholas and Britt, oh my god. <laughs> but it's not as incestuous as it might be, because yeah. different fathers, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. so Nicholas and Britt don't have any um, they don't blood have... connections, but they do ha- share a half uh, I think at this point, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, so Nicholas or Nathan is Brit's bro- half brother, mm-hmm. and, and his cousin, I believe. Okay. I think it would be his cousin. I think second cousin, because Victor is his great uncle. Okay. And Victor's son is is Nathan. That would make him the same generation as Stavros. Who is Nicholas's father? So that would be yeah. I think I think either I think second cousin. I think. I don't know. I'm uh, I I would have to look at a chart. <laughs> yeah, I would too. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's like, yeah, I I had I I looked at one of those once and I, like I figured out that my cousin's daughter is my first cousin once removed. But I don't remember what a what what a second cousin is. Yeah, I think second cousin is is like the cousin of like a either your cousin's kid or a, a or, or like one generation removed or, or I don't know what it is. <laughs> Somebody write in and tell us, goddamn. <laughs> but yeah, but speaking of Brit, yeah, she was scheming with with Spencer. Spencer did get found out. He did get caught. Um, at Carly's house because he was hiding with Jocelyn for a while, and and he he Franco found him and Franco was initially going to tell Nicholas, but uh, Spencer overheard Franco and Carly. I think it was I know Franco was one of them, but he he overheard Franco talking about uh, uncle his uncle Sonny, you know, mm-hmm. and, and information he has and and all of that. I think it was. Uh, oh. <laughs> I think it was um, Franco, honestly considering telling Ava, you know, about the recording or getting the recording or what have you. I, no, that's that's what it was. Franco was actually trying to get the recording off of Carly's computer. It was caught by Spencer, and Franco in turn was going to be like, oh, you know what? They're looking for you. And and Spencer's like, yeah, you tell them that. You tell them. Uh, you, know, you tell them you found me. And I'll tell them you're trying to hack into your what, girlfriend's computer. <laughs> Go, Spencer. Yeah. And Franco, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why was Spencer hiding? Uh, he, he it was it was his whole plan with Brit to get Nicholas to get closer to Brit. Um, you know, just in a crisis, Nicholas, you know, oh, you know okay. get Nicholas closer to Brit, and it worked for for a given value of worked because they did get closer. And in the end, you know, after Spencer was found, Elizabeth ended up finding him and bringing him home, for which Nicholas was thankful. Mm-hmm. You know, in the end, Nicholas, you know, he outright told Brit, like, you know, yeah, you know, feelings are still there, still want you, that sort of thing. But I also want to see where this goes with Elizabeth. And, you know, she's like, OK, you know, that's fine. They, they have like one last night together, you know, at Windermere because, well, that particular night uh, – 
Brad wanted to have a threesome. What? Yes, I will get to that in a moment. Um, okay. We'll come right back to that. But as and, and and Nicholas is like, okay, sure, why not? You know, you know, no strings, whatever. So they start having sex, and they get a phone call mentioning that Lulu has been kidnapped. <laughs> Shit. Uh, so so Nicholas and Elizabeth are together now. Not exactly. Uh, you know, he. You know, I, I think he. Had, Oh, God, I think last time I saw the two of them to, in the same room together, they kind of had it out about the whole situation. And from what I remember, she was not very happy with them. That, I, I admit, I didn't pay too close attention to that one. Well, because uh, Elizabeth and Rick were getting back together, but then Rick was arrested. Yeah, he was he was framed. Uh-huh. Yeah, he, he was framed for uh, being uh, the Jerome Kingpin mob boss, whatever. And of course, that's not true, because we all know that that we all know that it was really fake Luke. Yes. And Rick was supposedly killed after he was trying to escape from prison. Oh, that's right. I remember that now. Yeah. And so he's still gone. Yep, he's still gone. And they still think he's dead. Yeah. Although Molly, you know, Molly, while well, Molly, you no, know, you know, still thinks he's dead. She thinks that he was framed, and she tried to get Julian to confess. And it looked like he was about to at one point, but then somebody else walked in. Of course, because GH timing. Yeah. Yes, of course. It's just, god damn. Uh, Ned's still around. Um, let's see. I don't remember, but uh, but Alice, you know, the Quartermain maid, yeah. you know, Dominator, she, she ended up collapsing at ELQ when she found out what Tracy was up to. You know, she overheard Tracy on the phone with Faith. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I, I vaguely remember that. And uh, Tracy wanted to give her Rafe's heart. Yep, that ended up not working because um, I think Rafe had, like, heroin in his blood system or whatever. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was, and, it, and it was just, I think it was cocaine laced with heroin that the Jeromes were pushing unwittingly, thanks to fake Luke. Julian was pissed. Yeah. Mm. So why – that doesn't make sense. Why would that affect the ability to use the, the organs? Uh, it might have just been the fact that it was recent because it was still in his bloodstream when he died. And then that can't – you know, the, of course, bloodstream goes through the heart. Yeah. So it could affect – and it could affect Alice, who is older. While she was a You know, match, she's going to be on massive quantities of painkillers anyway. It's probably not going to make that much of a difference unless it damaged the organs in some way. So, sorry, uh, that I'm doing that thing where I try to apply logic to general hospital. <laughs> I can just stop it. Uh, well, well, either way, when Mickey Diamond was shot and killed, uh, Sonny actually paid an actress to come and act as Mickey's sister, long estranged sister, and said, you know what, take his heart. And he you know, gave Sonny credit. That was that was awesome of him. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, because he knows Morgan cares for the Dominator for Alice, because, you know, they have they have a bond of friendship and everything. Both of his sons really Yeah. You know, do care for her. And and in fact they even had a they even had a wrestler. I think it was uh Joe Oh God! It was uh, Ortuga, uh, Randy Ortuga, or, or Randy Ortega. Ortega, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. I, I I know some wrestlers' names from watching Spoonie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they had one. They had a wrestler come in and and make a make a guest appearance to talk to Alice. Oh. And Alice was like, "Oh my God!" It's like she was fangirling. <laughs> and he was like, "No, nah, man, we were all inspired that by you." It's like. <laughs> Aww. It was like mutual fangasming. It's like, yay! <laughs> and that was sweet. And so, of course, Alice is recovering, and now that she is recovering, she is the one who let the cat out of the bag about Tracy. Tracy's, for her part, she's sitting there like, don't you fucking dare, don't you fucking dare. And Alice is like, Miss Tracy, I love you, but fuck you. Yeah. You know, we don't want to see my Mr. Michael getting hurt. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Meanwhile, fake Luke is still off in the tropics somewhere. We don't know where he is, but he'll be back. He Why should be. Ba- leave? Well, uh, well, initially he went off on his honeymoon with Tracy. Oh. 
Yeah. And then Tracy ended up coming back all in tears because he had supposedly cheated on her with like two okay. misses or whatever. Yeah, so he just he's just been staying out of town? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, thank, thanks to uh, Tony Geary's uh, work schedule because he does take a significant time off during the year. Which, you're playing Luke Spencer. You've been doing that for, oh my yeah. god. Yeah, yeah. You, so, yeah. you know, yeah, and then now, that, now that I think of it, yeah, the, the characters every once in a while, they're like, oh yeah, you know how he just wanders off and he comes back when he feels like it. That, <laughs> that's, that's why. And that's, and that's the good thing about Luke as a character, is he can do that, people are used to it, and it gives the actor time to basically say, okay, you know what, I... I and do all this, I could do this here, and then I go off and do my thing. So it's 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 a good working schedule for him. You know, work like six months or so out of the year, take the other six months, go off. Or I think it's like I, I don't know exactly what his schedule is, but he, he has enough sway to say, Yeah, here's how I'm gonna work, let's work around this. And he even yeah. has say in how his character acts and reacts too. Nice. Which makes sense, considering the character of Luke Spencer has been around since the 70s, and he's yeah. been playing Luke Spencer since the 70s. Well, and he's, he... he's also one of the, one of the most popular oh, yeah. um, characters to ever be on the show. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, saving the world helped. <clears throat> uh, but, um, but yeah, so, so of course, if you're going, if you are an actor who's been on a show this long, and you're playing this legendary legacy character here, then, you know, of course, you, you get to have some say in your character because you've been in their shoes for so long. Yeah. And I know at one point, the one reason why this whole, you know, fake Luke drama is going on is because Tony Geary is like, you know what, I, I like playing Luke, but it, it's just, I want to play, be able to play somebody darker. You yeah. Know? And, and thus, fake Luke was born. We still don't know who he is. I want to know. I'm willing to bet he's working for the Cassidines, at the very least, if not a Cassidine. Uh, uh, speaking of which, there was a scene between uh, Stavros and Victor, which is like, oh my god, two generations of Cassidines that I've never seen interact on screen. Let's watch. <laughs> <laughs> and it's clear they both intimidate each other. Nice. They, have, they each have power in their own ways. Like, for one, Victor could have Stavros killed. But on the other hand, Stavros could kill Victor directly. So it's like double, double intimidation there. They're kind of, kind of like a movable, you know, irresistible force meets a movable object type thing there. I think that's how the phrase goes. So that, that's, oh god, where, where else do we have? Okay, um, eventually, uh, Spencer did spill the beans to Patrick and Sam about his suspicion that fake Luke was the one who ordered the hit on Patrick. Okay. You know, because he knew about him going after Uncle Sonny. You know, and little do as anybody know, because, you know, Spencer doesn't know who Julian Jerome is, or he didn't at the time, or he didn't see his face or whatever, but it happens to be Julian working with this fake Luke, and oh god, when that comes out, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a thing. Yeah. Uh, I think I touched on it earlier. Nate, Ned is, Ned is back around. He's doing his thing. He's kind of, he started kind of dating Olivia. And, and. Olivia? Yeah. Huh. Because, you know, after everything with, with, uh, all the fallout with everything, you know, especially with Ava, you know, you know, uh, Olivia's like, no, you know what, Sonny, fuck you. And move. Yeah. And, and and at first, she had snogged Ned as, as kind of a way to kind of just, you know, get at Sonny. But then Ned's like, you know what? I don't give a shit. I don't like him either. <laughs> <laughs> so so Sonny has never told Olivia the whole truth? No. Not at this point. And so she still thinks that Ava is having Sonny's love child or whatever. Yeah. We still don't know who the father is. Well, we got to draw that shit out. Well, of course. And... Oh God, were you, were you watching when Ava made her escape from Sunny? No, I was not. Oh damn, I that's... did forget to cover that. <laughs> well, yeah, it was... last I saw, she was she was living in Sunny's house, and uh, she she made a call. Who did she call? Well, she ended up calling her mother. Oh yeah, that's right. She called Delia, and 
tried to get Delia to help, and it didn't work. Yeah. And then Sunny took her phone away. Which then, I'm like, why the fuck didn't you do that in the first place, you dumb, dumb shit? Yeah. But anyway, continue. And somehow, um, Ava got the word to Julian, asking him for help. And he got her out of there by way of the hospital. And what had happened was, um, I think Ava called him from like her exam room or whatever. And Julian got there with a with a helicopter, and just snuck her out of there. And before Sonny could do anything, they were already gone. And Sonny's like, "God damn it!" Yeah. And so now Ava is under under heavy guard. <laughs> Where at? At her at her uh, penthouse. Apartment. Okay. So you know, she's back home. And so is Julian. <laughs> but that's okay. Oh God, what if I if I missed anything? Holy shit. <laughs> um, oh yeah, that's right. The threesome. I, I oh, almost yeah. forgot about the threesome. Daytime TV's first gay threesome. Almost. Because <laughs> um, all, you know, Felix, Brad, and Lucas, they they they've been you know having their struggles and their squabbles with their little love triangle going on, yeah. and Brad liking both of them. And at one point, he was going to tell one tell, tell them who it was, and then he saw Brad forcing himself on Felix in the shower. You know, kiss forcing, not like rape forcing. Uh, I just want to differentiate there. And, of course, Lucas gets pissed, and he he storms off, and then they all cool off later on, and they they, they, they get to talking. And and at, at one point, Lucas is like, well, why, don't we just have, why don't we just have a threesome? You know, basically. You know, oh. why, not, why not both? You know, let's have a threesome. And, and it ends up – Lucas shows up at Brad's place, and – and Felix is on his way there, but he actually gets stopped by Magic Milo, who confesses to Felix that he has a crush on somebody of, of his particular race. For those who are new, Felix is black and and, and, and doesn't know how his father is going to feel. His father is old-fashioned and making it drawn and long and drawn out that Milo is actually coming at the Felix and actually has a crush on him. Turns out that Milo has a crush on Epiphany. And the feeling is mutual. So, yay! <laughs> hey, you know what? Go for it. Yeah. Like, I, I was going to say, I, I thought Milo was straight, so I was confused for a minute. He so, is. Okay. But they made it seem like, well, maybe he wasn't straight after all. But then, you know, the more savvy viewers were like, no, he, he, he's crushing on Epiphany. It's Epiphany. And sure enough, yep, it's Epiphany. But that got Felix to thinking, you know what? I, I kind of want to wait for somebody who, who who can make me feel the way that uh, Milo was feeling towards Epiphany type thing? Yeah. So, you know, so Felix is like, I'm going I'm going back out for now, and so it just leaves Brad and Lucas. They hook back up. Good. And, yeah. <laughs> God damn it! No, you know what? Like, because that's one of the thing was you know throughout that whole love triangle, like Felix pissed me the fuck off. Like I used to like him. Oh, yeah? But, like, he was such a goddamn jackass about everything. <laughs> like, just this whiny, self-absorbed idiot. And I'm like, you know what? You don't deserve either of them. Yeah. But, hey, you know, Felix seems to be set on the right path again. Yeah. I hope. So he'll be fine. The two of them are fine. You know, Brad and... And uh, Lucas are fine now, although Lucas, you know, the following morning just learned that his uh, cousin was kidnapped, you know, because Britt gets home, finds the two of them in bed. And she's <laughs> like, oh, boy. <laughs> and, and yeah. And in fact, it was like even before they officially got back together, they were talking about like other guys or what have you. Mm hmm. And they were talking about Nicholas, and, and they're both like, yeah, Nicholas is hot. And and Brad's like, yeah, you know that Michael Corinthos is like pretty hot too. And and Lucas is like, yeah, that's kind of my nephew. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. Remember, Lucas is related to a lot of people in town. <laughs> Everybody's related to everybody else. Yeah. It's kind of kind of like how... Kind of like the real world, because because yeah. if you trace it back, you know, I mean, even it, let you know, even if you want to go like by biblical standards, we are technically related to everybody else. Yeah. We are a, we are one big ball of incest on this planet. <laughs> oh boy, 
<laughs> and Becky's going to hear and she's going to be like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. Okay, so we hit the threesome. We hit Ned and Sean and, and um, oh, uh, um, um, I had her name earlier, Jordan. Sean and Jordan have hooked up. In secret. Oh. Yeah, in secret, of course. Does he know that she's DEA now? No, he does not. So he's hooking up with her thinking that she's a drug dealer? Pretty much. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. And they just told TJ. So I'm I'm assuming, because um, the last I was there, they were, like, arguing over um, basically her, her dead husband and, like, stuff that had happened. Mm-hmm. And, like, my assumption was that the two of them had, um, like, she had cheated on her husband with Sean. Yeah, something like that, I think. But uh, they, it got to a point to where, you know, the night where Mickey Diamond was killed, when Jordan had, had let herself go up to his room or whatever, Sean got, went in there. He broke in to try and convince her not to do it. Mm-hmm. And Jordan is like, no, 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 no. And then Mickey appears. I, I think he appeared and got Sean out of the room or what have you. Or, or somehow Sean got out of the room. And and it's not long after that. The two of them are just like, you know what? Let's just fuck. And so they did. And and TJ, when TJ was told, he didn't just find out. You know, Sean was forward with him. He's like, you know what? Yeah, you know, you're suspecting it. You know, um, I'm just going to tell you, yeah, it's your mama. And while TJ's a little little pissed at first, he's like, you know what, you know what, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're honest with me. Yeah. yeah. So he doesn't. You know, he doesn't know, like it, but. <laughs> you know, it seems to me like given enough time to like process it, mm-hmm. TJ should be excited because I mean it's his mother and his surrogate father. Yeah. I mean, big happy family, potentially. Yeah. There you go. Although no one can be happy, like I said, so. Yeah, not completely happy forever. Like I said, I, when it comes to the conflicts on this show, I kind of like the ones that are more adventurous. You want the one, the ones that aren't necessarily, you know, you, you know, you have your dramas of the heart, sure, but I like the more bigger adventure types. You know, like with the Cassidines going on right now, because mm-hmm. it looks like Victor is, for all intents and purposes, it looks like he's going to end up trying for world domination. Of course. Because that's what Cassidines do. At least his generation. <laughs> oh, lordy. Yeah, and if Nicholas starts going that way, then we will need to go and we will need to punch him in the taint. Like, no, you are not your grandfather. Do not do this, no. Yeah. Oh, lordy, what did I have I missed? Have I missed anything? <laughs> we got two uh-huh. months of stuff. I, I'm trying to make sure I've got everything. Uh, let's see. Uh, look at my, my cheat sheet real quick here. Um, oh, yeah. How Nina wants to uh, get revenge on Kiki is having Rosalie seduce Michael. Never mind that Rosalie objects to it because she is attracted to Morgan. And, oh, yeah, we can add Rosalie to the number to the gr- now growing number of people that realize that I, I think realize that there was something going on between Sonny and Carly because Kiki found out that Sonny and Carly slept together. She told Morgan because she needed to confide in somebody. Yeah. She was about to tell Franco, but Carly got there and stopped her. And the two of them were talking about it at Kelly's and and uh, oh god, Rosalie came up, was was coming up, and she just happened to overhear. Oh, of shit. course, <laughs> because people overhear things when it's convenient to the story. Of course, how much you want to bet Rosalie is gonna is gonna go end up going to Franco or somehow using this? Oh lordy, or or at least letting telling Nina and Nina forcing her to you know to do it. I. And of course, with the way the economy is now, and, and, and obviously it reflects in the universe as well, the fact that I pay your I, I fill out your paycheck, I pay you monies to do what I want, you know, between that and being unemployed in this economy, that's a pretty powerful motivator for Rosalie to do what Nina wants. Yeah. Which is which is really unfortunate. 
Oh, because obviously when I'm seeing Rosalie does not want to do it. But it's like, it's either this, or go back on the job market, and we don't want that. I got student loans, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Oh, and Nina's wanting to have a baby. She wants to have a baby, but menopause. Why does she want to have a baby? Because she wants to replace the one that was killed when her mother sedated her into a coma. Okay. So, you know, and she, and, and you know what? She got to bone Silas. And apparently it was pretty wild, too. <laughs> but, you know, that's not going to make a baby. At least according to what Britt told her. So, yeah. Um, I think that's about it um, <sighs> for about everything. I don't think I've missed anything. Um, again, again, Jason's coming back. He is going to be back. We, last we saw him, he was starting to struggle against his restraints because he wants to get the hell out of there. I don't blame him. Yeah. Um, Stavros is about to – he is about to implement his plan to implant his embryo into Lulu against her will. You know, and then I hope Dante beats the shit out of him. Don't necessarily want to kill him because I only bring him back because he's enjoyable. You know, there's a confrontation between uh, Victor and Nathan. Victor has revealed that Nathan is his son, right in front of Obrecht. Anna is sneaking into Crichton Clark, all Metal Gear style, except looking a little sexier than Solid Snake. <clears throat> yeah, I, I would like to, to point out that the last time that she snuck in somewhere, at least that, that I was watching, was when she um, snuck onto that island and got herself locked in a basement yeah because she sucks at her <laughs> job yeah there there's got to be dramatic convenience somewhere yeah. oh so uh, what else what else what else what else what else um yeah I, I think those are the big ones that 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 are kind of the roundup there we are about out of time <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lordy. So, two months and one hour. I know we've missed some details. Um, if there's any we missed you want us to, like, discuss on a future show or whatever, you know, we could we can do a little bit of um, um, follow-up on some of this stuff in the next show if we need to. But if we missed any details, leave us a comment, whether here or Tumblr or wherever, and and we'll we'll, we'll make sure to mention it in the next show. Um so yeah, we we, we sh now now with our schedules actually working back, we should be able to go back to weekly. I hope. Yes. I very very much hope. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. That that and with uh, school back in session, there, we don't have little kids running around here, so we're. Yay. So that is that is very very good. Um. So um yeah, uh thank you guys for listening. Uh, if we wanted to find Namio on the social media, where could we find her? You can find me on Tumblr at Namios Corner, on the Twitter at uh, at Naomi Washburn, and on the fabulous rtgomer.com. What? And if you want to find me on social media, you can find my stuff at rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. I am on the Twitters and the Tumblrs at gomer 21 X. Uh, if you want to check out the Facebook pages for both the sites I'm on, you just head over to Facebook, look up either RT Gomer Productions or Nerdvice, go join them, like them, you know, tell us what you like, if you like these shows, if you don't like these shows. But if you do like these shows and you really, really want to help improve our quality and improve just things in general, or if you just want to help me put eventually get out of here and put food on my table, then head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. You can donate as little or as much as you want per production. And if you, and if you only have a certain amount that you can do per month, you can set yourself a cap. And and Patreon will not allow that cap to, to be overtaken. So if you only have $5 and you want to toss $5 per month at me, then just head over there, click one of the things, cap it out at 5 and there you go. You're, you're, you're good for the month. Um, and for those who, who are now listening to this and don't know, uh, the reason why I say that is because I actually had a patron who um, – who had started donating and uh, mis misread the uh, times when the money would actually be coming out, and uh, he ended up uh, over-pledging a bit. It didn't break him, thankfully, but, uh, but they learned the lesson. 
and and so forth. But uh, but yeah, because of that, I do want to make sure everybody knows. Yeah, uh, be sure to set your limits there, if if you don't if you have a strict budget. Um, and also if if you want to get some fabulous artwork or some awesome animation, then check out my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who also has a Patreon account over at patreon.com slash Becky Hop. That also has a link to her site, to her DeviantArt page. And if you pledge enough money to her, I think it's somewhere in the range of $100 or whatever, she will do a 30-second animation for your face. Did I mention she's an award-winning animator? She Woo. is. She's, she's awesome. She is awesome, and she is working on some new title cards for for this show and for Thespian Talk. She's done the new ones for Constructive Deconstruction. If you watch that, that is her work, um, and also a few few of my other things as well. Um, but anyway, uh, that is going to be it for this week. Thank you guys for listening, and until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.